Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to Episode 7 of Direwolf20's Let's Play, Season 3. Uh, just stepping over to my collector at the moment, picking up the Mobius fuel that's in there, and you might have also noticed I took out the target block. That's because I want to start upgrading these goodies uh, straight up to uh, Eternus fuel, which is pretty much the highest tier of fuel that's available. I'm actually going to throw 8 of these Mobius fuel into my little system right here, and I'll wait for them to start upgrading to Eternus fuel. I want to get started on some Eternus fuel production. Let's see how much EMC resides in a Mobius fuel. Oh yeah, good amounts of it. Nice to know. Just want to make sure my transmutation table knew all about that thing. And, uh, let's see. What should we do this episode? I definitely probably want to go mining again, because I have some more mining to do. I'm doing alright on diamonds, which is good. I'm doing alright on some of these, uh, ingots and whatnot, so that's also probably pretty good. Uh, let's see what I can come up with to build today. So as you can see, my MFE is doing pretty good right now. As a result of that, I'm probably going to want to craft a couple more of these overclocker upgrades. So why don't I snag this guy uh, out of here? I'm going to need some more coolant cells. So why don't I go grab a handful of those? All I need to do, and look, it's like it's getting a little dark out, but I should have some empty cells in here somewhere. Maybe I threw them in here. Yeah, I did. All right. I'm going to go grab 12 of them. I'm going to go outside and fill them with water. And then I'll probably be back. Alright, got myself a few water cells. Let's go compress them and get them turned into the proper items. Gotta love that portal. Just run them through the extractor. I'll be back once I've got all 12. And as you guys can see, I now have two overclocker upgrades. And let's see what kind of energy draw we've got going on here. That's probably not right. It's definitely using energy. You know what? It's probably not going through the wire. Probably because it's right next to the uh, LV transformer there. So let's do this. So yeah, it looks like it's hovering around four energy units per tick. Maybe three and a quarter. So let's get some more overclocker upgrades going. How am I? I'm alright. Uh, I need some more iron, I believe. Refined iron, that is. So let's go over here and grab some more refined iron. I'll just throw it in my electric furnace. Maybe grab my overclocker upgrades and have it help out a little bit. Oh yeah, look at that. Running a little bit better already. How much energy is that drawing now? Ooh, looks like around six. So yeah, noticeably more energy required to use your overclocker upgrades, but because we have this MFE sitting here full of juice, and I've got those water mills and stuff out back, it's pretty good. So I'm not too worried about it. So I'll be right back once I've got some more things to do. Actually, I have another idea. I might want to do something. Hmm. Yeah, I think I should be able to do this. Alright, let's see. What do I got here? I need some rubber. Uh, okay, rubber. Three of them ought to do. I'm going to run over here to my crafting table, and I'm going to craft up, for me, some high-voltage cable. And I'm going to upgrade these. Remember I said you can upgrade cabling more times? Well, high-voltage cable is the highest tier voltage um, available to you guys at the moment. Uh, it can store, I think it can transmit 2,048 energy units per tick, per packet. So that's a lot of power. I'm going to grab some redstone. And I'm also going to make for myself... I'm just going to get ready here with this thing. I'm going to need a few more electronic circuits in the future anyway, so let's get ready with that. And let's combine the electronic circuit, the high voltage cable, I think it's something like this. Yeah, there we go. EU detector cable. That is going to be a good thing to have. Um, I'm going to go play with that outside in a little bit. But for now, what do I have? I'll get two more of these things and place them like so. I need some more copper cabling. What's the recipe for these guys again? There we go. Overclocker upgrades. Woot. That looks pretty good. So now I've got four overclocker upgrades total. Let's see how well we can cook these things up with four overclocker upgrades. And let's get ready with our EU reader here, because I'm interested to see how quick this
this runs. Oh yeah, it looks like it's using almost 10 energy units per tick, and it's using more energy that it can store. Wow. Good to know. Okay. So I'm about to make one more of those things, and then I'll have a total of five. That might be pretty good for now. There we go. Five overclocker upgrades. So that should be uh, pretty darn good. I'm going to throw them in my macerator at the moment, but that should work. Why don't we make it daytime and go use that EU detector cable I just made. Alright, so here's my issue at the moment. And let's see what you guys think about this. Right now, this timer is ticking away like crazy and making lots of noise out here, and it's bothering me. Um, and it's especially bothering me at the moment because this MFE right here doesn't need any more power. It's full. It's not being used. So this timer really doesn't need to run as long as this MFE is full, right? Right. So let's replace one of these cables. Let's say... I don't know, this one. Yeah, that's a good cable to replace. With an EU detector cable. And the way this EU detector cable works is, if there's energy flowing through the cable, then it's going to turn on. So let's give it something to charge up about. Macerate, please. See, look. As long as the machines are running, and the MFE is not full, and the water mills are producing electricity, but once they're full, the MFE is full now, it doesn't need electricity, this EU detector cable goes off. So I now need to get this thing running over here and tell it basically, hey, if that EU detector cable's on, don't tick anymore. So let's cook up a few more of these stone thingies. There we go. Look how fast that electric furnace goes with the overclockers in it. I like it. I'll get an induction furnace eventually, don't worry guys, I still like those a little bit better than these overclockers, I'm not sure why. And then uh, I need to build two gates right now. I need to build a knot gate, I believe, and the recipe for that is as shown. So let's make sure we get this on the table and be ready with it. So I'm going to need uh, something like this. And I'm going to need one of those uh, torches. Why don't I just make myself a good number of redstone torches for the moment? I'm probably going to need a handful of them. So just one for now, though. And one with just the redstone wiring on it. Cool. Stone wire there. These guys like so. This thingy. And that. Perfect. Got a knot gate. Now I'm going to get myself a repeater. And the redstone repeater from Red Power is crafted, as you see here. So I'm going to need two of these and three of these. And this NEI overlay thing is awesome for building these machines, particularly. So there we go, a repeater. Nice. So let's go outside. Hopefully I've got enough... Uh, red power wiring there, but if not, I might want to just grab some more copper. I'm gonna need more copper pretty soon. I'm gonna need a lot more resources pretty soon. That should be good. So the repeater is gonna have to go on this wall here, right underneath this guy. And where's my screwdriver? I don't think I brought it out with me. Those of you new to my series will be pretty uh, shocked to realize that I often forget items when I'm ready to do stuff. I'm always running back to my inventory to get what I need. That's just a dire wolf trait. So there we go. And now I should be able to run this redstone wiring. Remember I said you can run it along the ground like so. I'm just going to run it straight up here. I'm going to need a little bit more of this stuff. So it's a good thing I got cooking ahead of time. There we go. Give me back my redstone, Mr. Alloy Furnace. And I need a knot gate here because I basically want the opposite of um, what's currently going to happen. So if I run this guy like this and the knot gate like so, the knot gate will keep the timer from ticking until it needs to. See? So if I were to throw, let's say, cobblestone into my electric furnace here, the electric furnace is going to start drawing energy. Hmm, more energy than it can draw, I see. What's going on here real quick? Is this 
guy not emitting power for some reason? Yes, I just reversed the voltage on my LV transformer, so that was not a smart move. So let's move this guy. See how it's running now? Um, the redstone power was going through the wall into the LV transformer and was preventing the LV transformer from doing its job. It was actually reversing it and uh, having the output go up to the MFE. So kind of the opposite of what we wanted to do. Why am I even getting a redstone signal from here? Yeah, that shouldn't even be happening. So let's fix that real quick by running our red wire like this. That should be a lot better. And then what I can do here is maybe move this thing and just reverse it, basically. So where did that EU detector cable go? And my repeater and my cobblestone. Good. So we'll put the tin here. The EU detector cable like this, maybe. That looks good. And what's on this wall? Nothing, right? Good. Let's try it here and make sure we don't have any issues. Where's my screwdriver? Okay. How does that look? Not bad. So can my machines get power once again? Let's find out. Yep, they can. And as a result, let's, yeah, this guy's allowing the machine to run. See, the timer's going now. But as soon as I take the items out of here and the machine no longer needs to run, the MFE is full and the timer is no longer going to tick along. So we kind of gave ourselves a little auto shutoff system here, which I'm pretty happy with. And I could have sworn that I had done this before I uploaded my config files for you guys, but you can go into the Red Power config file and there's an enable sounds option in there. And if you set that to zero, it'll turn off the ticking noise from the timer. I could have sworn I had done that before I uploaded it for you guys, like I said, but uh, apparently I didn't, so sorry about that. Um, if you don't like that ticking noise, again, go into your Red Power config, which is in your .minecraft folder and the Red Power folder, and you'll find the config file in there. You should see a line that says enable sounds equals one. Change it to enable, enable sounds equals zero. So let's go check on our collector. Looks like I'm barely making progress towards Aeternus fuel. It's going to be a while before I have any Aeternus fuel, but oh well, I need some. So I'm going to head down and mine for a little bit, I think. I've got my mining drill ready, fully charged backpack. I even have a little bit of Mobius fuel here to help me out with my destruction catalyst. Uh, those of you new to the series will be interested to see how the destruction catalyst works right now. Uh, I'm going to go and find my way towards a spot I'd like to mine. What you got to do with your destruction catalyst is face it at the wall and right click. And it'll mine in a 3x3 area right in front of you. And it'll drop all the items that come out of that into what's called an item ball. I think it's called an item ball. And as you can see, the nine pieces of cobblestone that we just got as a result of that drop on the floor as shown in that little item ball. That prevents lag. And you can see it's using up Mobius fuel. It's pretty much costing me EMC value energy to run this destruction catalyst. But remember that the Mobius fuel has, what was it, 2,000 something EMC? And I want to say the destruction catalyst uses six EMC per block broken. So we just used a handful of EMC to break that block. And we can charge this guy up with V to the next level, and it's going to mine a little bit deeper. How cool is that? We can even charge it up a little bit more. And it's going to mine much deeper. And there's one more charge level to this guy. Just remember, you're using a lot of EMC to make this big, huge hole that we just made. So this Mobius fuel I have isn't going to last me too long. So I probably want to hang on to it and, uh, you know, be a little bit diligent about how rare it is that I use it. I don't want to be spamming the button, let's say. So I'm going to go clean up all this ore that I've got and mine for a little bit, and I'll be back. Just an interesting thing to show you guys. I started digging around a little bit in the ground here, and I actually found a lake at Bedrock. I'm not sure if that's rare or not. I've never encountered it. I've never seen water hanging out at Bedrock here. But, uh... Hey, it can't be that rare, right? Alright, just finished mining for a little bit. Got a good bunch of resources here. Gonna head on home. And I'll probably steal up the wall behind me. I can always run back downstairs. 
let me clean up my inventory, macerate some ores, and I'll be back in a little bit to do some cool stuff, hopefully. Hey, sweet, my first piece of Aeternus fuel. This is the highest tier fuel source. Uh, as you can see, it's worth four Mobius fuels. And if I were to go stick it in my transmutation grid, there we go, learned it, 8,000 EMC. That's a lot of energy right there. That's about as much energy as a piece of diamond. So one Aeternus fuel equals one diamond's worth of energy. Good to know. And just to note here, this macerator right in the middle, looks like it's using about 14 to 15 energy units per tick. Um, and that's with five overclocker upgrades. An interesting thing to note. So what I'm doing right now is trying to determine if overclocker upgrades are better than advanced machines. Um, they both seem to actually be a little bit balanced in terms of their EU use. Um, I want to see what a sixth one of these guys would do, both in terms of speed and in terms of uh, EU use. But for now, well, maybe I'll go craft one in a minute. We'll see. All right, I did just run outside and get a few water cells. Let's start doing what we can with these guys. I want to bump this guy up to like eight overclocker upgrades and see what kind of energy use it requires, or it, it brings down. So uh, I'll be back after I've crafted three more of these overclocker upgrades. All right, so to get three overclocker upgrades, we're going to need one, two, oh, looks like I'm out of copper cabling. I think I've got more in my chest over here, though. Yeah, I got plenty of the stuff. All right, maybe not plenty, plenty, but a good amount. There we go. Third one of these guys, I'm going to need six of you. One, two, three. Now I've noticed in my playing around in my test world that about eight of these overclocker upgrades is pretty darn fast. So let's get ready with our EU reader down here. And I could probably just read it off the uh, machine itself. So let's throw some silver ore in. And see how quick that's going now? That's pretty fast. No way, is it really using 51 energy units per tick? All right, that is a noticeably faster draw of energy as you bump up to eight. I'll bring it down to six. What are we at now? 22. All right, so uh, as you increase the speed of this thing with overclocker upgrades, it looks like it noticeably faster. Uh, or, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a big deal, <laughs> is pretty much what I'm saying here. Um, the more overclocker upgrades you put in this thing, the uh, more energy it's going to draw. So let's throw, uh, let's throw all eight in there and do the gold ore real quick. So, I mean, it's nice being able to cook stuff super fast, but, wow, that's a lot of energy. But then again, also consider the fact that it's not taking quite as long to cook things, right? So, or to macerate things. So while it would take, oh, I don't know, uh, you know, 10 seconds with 20 energy units per tick, or 5 seconds at 50 energy units, Tick, you know, like, there's not that much of a difference in terms of EU. So I should probably at some point sit down and figure out exactly what the EU costs are. And if they're about balanced, it might be worthwhile to use these macerators with the overclocker upgrades rather than the advanced machines. Because advanced machines require one energy unit per tick just to sit there and not do anything. Where the overclocker upgrades don't have that disadvantage. Alright, watching my electric furnace run, it looks pretty obvious that this thing's drawing a lot more energy because this is how fast the uh, induction furnace probably would be moving at this point, but it wouldn't be drawing 75 energy units per tick, so uh, that's a noticeably more expensive upgrade. I'm thinking advanced machines would probably be worthwhile in the end. You know, if you have the advanced machines add-on, of course. Alright guys, I don't think there's been a better time for me to attempt a large build than right now. I'm um, pretty much at the point where I want to build my standard sorting system, which you guys have seen me build a few times. Uh, I've done it a couple different ways, a couple different times. I'm going to try things a little differently again this time. I'm probably going to wind up using Red Power again because I just really like the way Red Power handles my sorting system. Um, so why don't I start building out a room here to get my Red Power and uh, sorting system built, and then we'll uh, start doing it, and maybe I can make it a little bit better than I did last time. And I think I've decided I'm not going to build it here. I don't like that. I want to build it in this room. But in order to build it in this room, I'm going to have to do something about all these chests. So let me see. What do I got in here at the moment? Six of them? So let's grab some diamonds. 
That's right, I'm about to use six diamonds to build some more inventory storage, and that means, dun dun dun, equivalent exchange. Uh, let's get our covalence dust here. We've got some smooth stone. I believe I'm going to need some iron. And uh, let's get out our philosopher's stone. And you know what? I'll do it at my crafting table. Why not? Where's my alchemical chest? There it is. The crafting recipe is as shown. Well, I'm going to need some empty chests, too. Hmm, darn. Uh, I think I've got some actually hanging out right over here. Yeah, I've got three of them. That'll work. Where was I? Oh, right. The recipe is like shown. Place your diamonds in the middle. Chests on the bottom. Iron on the sides. Stone on the side of the diamond. And green, light blue, blue. There we go. Three alchemical chests. That's step one. Now it's time for me to rearrange this room just a little bit. So where do I want my chests to be? Hmm, good question. Probably along this wall. Yeah, I think I like the sounds of that. So what I'm gonna do is place down my first alchemical chest right here. And you can see it's a nice small little box, but it has a huge inventory on the inside. And what's nice about these is they can be placed side by side. That's what I love so much about my alchemical chests is they can be placed, and look, Oh man, I didn't even notice this until recently, but uh, Zeldo, or, uh, or Zeno, actually uh, changed up the size of the alchemical chest to be the same size as the regular chest. Oh, and they open up now, too. Awesome. And like I said, they can be placed right next to each other. Ooh, that looks pretty nice, actually. Kinda like that. Alright, so let's start moving our junk over. I'll grab all my cobble here and move it into this chest. See how nice that is? And my dirt, too. At least for now. Well, maybe I'll put dirt and gravel in here. I tend to like to have one full chest of cobblestone. Don't ask me why. Okay, that looks pretty sharp. And, uh, this... Eh, I don't know what I want to do with this stuff. That might go into uh, a miscellaneous junk category. I mean, I kind of like the idea of building supplies, but I don't see myself filling up an entire chest worth of building supplies. Let's hang on to the bricks for now. I'll keep the marble brick in there. And this can be my uh, equivalent exchange chest. So let's put this stuff in here. And I'm going to rearrange my inventory for a bit, and I'll be back once I'm done. And guys, I decided I needed one more of these chests. Uh, and that's going to basically be my miscellaneous junk chest as a result of the fact that I uh, wound up using an extra chest for uh, dirt and cobble being separate. So. Looks like we're pretty good there. Let's just get all this stuff out of here. I'll be back when it's done. Alright, look at how much more compact that looks. Now, of course, it's going to be a little tricky to figure out where everything is, so I'm going to put up some signs in a few minutes here, maybe after I reorient exactly how these guys should go. I guess now's as good a time as any to find out how well these things react to being picked up. Oh, not at all. That's a shame. But, uh, that's alright. I'll be able to figure out exactly where I want items to be. And real quick, I need some wooden planks. So let's convert some, uh, oh, what do you say? We convert some cobblestone into wooden planks, huh? Yeah, I'm gonna need a lot more cobblestone to get wooden planks, aren't I? How much EMC is wood? Eight! Oh, goodness. Alright, maybe I should just go chop down some trees, even though it's raining and dark out. I'm going to sleep through the night and get more wood. All right, much better. A little, my, uh, little uh, forestry excursion there. Got myself some wood. And let's now make ourselves... I don't know, I think eight sticks should be good, right? I'll save an extra sign. Why not? Can't hurt. So let's go set up some signs in this room right here. First, we're going to have cobble. That's what's in this chest. And eventually, I might have that half cobble, half smooth stone, but we'll see what we come up with in the future. Uh, next up, I'm going to have sand, dirt, and gravel on this guy. And this is a pretty standard thing for me. Dirt, sand, and gravel. That's pretty common for how I do things. Uh, this chest is going to be all just bars, ingots, and and all kinds of different stuff, so all forms of ingot. I like the wording there. Ingots and bars. Sure, why not? 
this guy is going to be dusts and diamonds and coal. I'll call it miscellaneous valuable, including diamonds. <laughs> and this will be my industrial craft. Looks like I've got some forestry stuff in here. Might as well make this for build craft. I don't think I have any build craft items yet. This is going to be equivalent exchange and forest. No, equivalent exchange and red power. Yeah, that's it. Maybe something else in the future. And this will be my last miscellaneous junk. Just all kinds of garbage that doesn't really fit anywhere else and isn't terribly useful, but might be nice to have. All right. So next I'm going to have to straighten out this room. It needs to be bigger in order to be an automatic sorting room. So I'll probably push this wall back a little bit, push that wall back a little bit, and then expand this room a little. But that's probably going to have to wait till next episode. I feel like this episode has gone on long enough. So this has been episode 7 of Direwolf 20's Let's Play Season 3. Next episode I'm going to get to that sorting system that I always like to build. What I always usually like to do is uh, have a nice, awesome sorting system to automatically handle any items that get fed into it, and then I can start working on a quarry to automatically get items, and they'll automatically be sorted into the sorting system, which is pretty much exactly what I want. So, Direwolf20 signing off. Take it easy, guys.